Good morning, everyone. I've been up for a while now, and I was writing an article about Mars going into Cancer energy, and literally, I just saw myself recording my guides. Basically, something has to come through in this video, and we're talking about Mars going into Cancer energy, how the cardinal signs are getting super duper activated, you know, we have this ridiculous conjunction in Libra over here. We have Pluto and Capricorn again. Like, this is wild stuff. And it's so beautiful for my leaders, for all of you, because this is the cardinal signs getting activated. Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. And we all have those signs in our chart. So I'd highly recommend finding like where this is falling in your chart. We will deep dive into this. If you have any planets in this, but yeah, something's got to come through. I have some key dates to look out for. This transit of Mars and Cancer goes well into 2025. Well into 2025. And it's it's so exciting. I have no idea what's going to come through. But my guides, the whole thing, it literally, I just kept hearing something has to come through. And, you know, my community needs to be here to, to receive it. So let's get started. Welcome. If you are new here to my table, to my channel, my name is Sarah. I am a channel. I channel information from source. I am here to, how do I say, whatever label that you want to put on me that says I'm here to help guide you during this time of your life and the awakening, whether you come from leadership and you're integrating some metaphysical practices into your life, whether you are very, very spiritual and you are integrating a growth mindset. And I kind of help blend those two worlds. We can sometimes go a little bit too woo-woo or a little bit too Mars assertive. And I'm here to kind of give y'all a handshake and remind you that staying authentic. I was chatting with my shaman about this yesterday. Staying, there's not best, there's not greater than, there's no, these words can be so triggery. I love a good trigger. But authentic, being in your most authentic vibration, that's what I want from you. Because we can't, go, 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 go all the time. We can't be asserting ourselves at all time. What did I write down? You know, I the, like quote, I don't want to fight anymore. Like this is Mars assertion going into cancer, the whole body, home, my pocket of the world. Safety is key. So it's very interesting that, okay, I want to get into it, but I want to give you a pause. Do you think that this needs a name? The hematite. I'm going to use the hematite for the pause because I have the circular one that is Uranus on the astrological board. But let me know what your intuition says. And if your intuition says it needs a name, please comment the name below and we will name, name this, this little guy. Seems masculine to me, but let me know what comes through for you. And go grab your journal, your coffee or tea. I have Earl Grey, but I put some lemon in it. There's lemon in my water as well. Like I said, I saw my shaman yesterday and everything's just... We're doing it so pause the video let me know if the hematite needs a name comment below and if you like it like it like up like the name that you like is what i mean okay okay so there's a lot happening let's talk about i'm going to just give you some dates to jot down as far as mars is concerned because yes this is activating mars uh, blah, blah. Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, but Scorpio and Aries are both run by Mars. So Scorpio, you as well are getting activated by this. And because Pluto is one of your ruling planets. So Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, and Scorpio, if you have any of your big three in that, my entire big three is in that, so I'm right there with you. So you're getting, you're getting asked to stand in your power and softness right now. So some key dates, this is the first collection and I'll put them all in the bit in the bottom. So I'll just go through them quickly, but I'll, I'll put them in the description. So to debrief with yourself, the 20th of July, 2024 is when Mars went into Gemini and the 4th of September, I'm recording this on the 5th, so that was yesterday, Mars went into Cancer. The 3rd of November, 2024, Mars is going into Leo. The 6th of December, 2024, Mars is going retrograde in Leo at six degrees. 
the 6th of January, 2025, Mars is going back into Cancer. 23rd of February, 2025, Mars is going direct in Cancer at 17 degrees. So that's the block. And the 18th of April, Jesus God, that's a long time from now, 2025, Mars is going back and Mars is going into Leo. So, Sarah, what does any of that mean? What do you what do you want from me? Mars going into Gemini. I have a whole video on Mars and Gemini. I'll put the link below. And then I'll put the link to my subs the link to my Substack is also below. I wrote a whole article on that. And so Mars and Gemini was over here. Mars in our communication planet, early learning and short trips, it's dialogue, mutable air energy. It was the, you know, asispasi, I think that's what I call that video, where our dialogue or words were very, very cutting. It was very sharp and you could really, how do I say? And if you're new here when I'm talking to you, my guides show me images over here and I have two other screens that are going over here. It's very, very fascinating. It's been very new that I've had this screen up here open and it's very galactic. This is like a past life screen over here. These are my guides showing me images and this is like a very galactic screen that is you know, mostly for the United States. I'm in the United States. I'm a part of like the energy, the vibration of the United States, which is a Kansas sun, Aquarius moon, and a Sag rising. That's the chart of the US. And so it's very, very fascinating. There's so many things happening. I got a lot of tabs open, if you will. And so Mars in Gemini was asking us to really understand and learn how to trust our intuition as far as is it safe to have a healthy dialogue with this with this person, with the soul in front of me? And with those acid spicy words that we were saying, it's not about having the same belief systems. I love having dialogue with people that don't share my belief systems, but it's the values that really show me if it's appropriate or necessary to engage with this person. And like we talk about around here, we speak from I statements. This is what I'm experiencing. I believe this, I like this, this is my life, this is my reality. And then you can, someone's sharing with you, oh my God, thank you so much for sharing. This is my reality. Like that's not mine, but thank you so much for sharing your reality. Instead of your reality's cuckoo pants. You're what, you this, you this, you this. I find that that's a really incredible tool to be cognizant of as we're navigating this world to see I'm asking my guides because they're talking because it's we're really integrating a lot of ego work right now raise of hands we're we're judging and being judged it's a lot of that happening right now so basically I'll give the parable of the restaurant there's one question that I ask every table and I have for a very long time in the restaurant industry First question that I ask after is like, what type of water do you want? Bottled water, still sparkling, or tap water? Get you some bread. And then as I'm watering the table, I don't ask if you've been to the restaurant before. That's not my intention. You'll tell me. But the one question I ask every single table is, what are you celebrating today? What are you celebrating? And sometimes people are like, no, we're not really celebrating anything. You know, we're just here for dinner. And that tells me, okay, Sarah give them good food and beverage, give them the restaurant experience, you represent a great you know, restaurant, give them the experience. They don't wanna talk about astrology, they don't wanna talk about anything, none of that. Some people are like, oh, it's a birthday, oh, it's an anniversary, we can talk about this, like something actually specific that they're celebrating. I'm like, oh, you're a Virgo, what's happening here? Oh, you've been together for this many years, what do you love about each other? Tell me more about that. And I'll just talk a little bit about them. One of my favorite answers is, oh, we're celebrating friendship, fingers and toes, we're alive, food and water, look at this beautiful environment that we get to sit in. It's a beautiful day, yeah, yeah, everything's, I'm like, let's do this, let's do this. Let us, let us express gratitude for every little thing. I love you and all the things and we just, I end up, you know, we end up hugging by the end of it usually. And it's a beautiful day. That question alone, same question for every single table, tells me what, how to connect with them, how to communicate with them. Because it's not about me. 
It's not about you coming to me and being like, how do I say? If I didn't ask that question, I could get very frustrated with like, why don't they want to talk about astrology? Why don't they want to talk? Because they came up for food and beverage, Sarah. They didn't pay you for a session. That's not what they're interested in. So why would you get emotionally involved and invested with someone that just wants some good food? It tells me how I can best serve that person, how I can best engage with that person. That's how they tell me. I in, They came to my table, so energetically we are a vibrational match for each other, but I want to give you the experience that you want to experience. It's not about me. It's not about me. And so with all that being said, having some key, because I can't ask that to every single person that I bump into on the street or at the cafe or out and about in my normal life, it is a very psychological thing that waiters, once they waiter later into their years, can become very introverted and a little bit like, I don't want to say scared, but they, because you don't have control over like normal situations and settings, they don't socialize as much if waiters, you know, are career waiters or things like that. You'll see that. It's like, if I'm not wearing the apron, what do I do? What do I do? How do I engage with people? It's a very strange psychological thing. So I find that that happens to me sometimes. So I purposely put myself in situations like going to the summit of greatness and I am absolutely terrified. I'm like, I don't know what to do. normal people and they'll just just like wait for the invitation little projector to your thing you're going to be fine all is well it's next week it's a week from today i'm terrified all is perfectly well sarah all is perfectly well and so having some foundational like values or key markers like key markers and this is something that maybe you can look at the 20th of july to september 4th like how could you tell how could you tell this is something to ask yourself and if you feel safe and comfortable and confident comment below how can you tell when it is appropriate exciting safe or that you want to engage with someone how can you tell how can you tell when it was not okay to engage with someone? How can you tell when someone's sleeper cell was going off? How can you tell if someone shares your values? How could you tell? Because that's blending a little bit of your intuition and your spiritual practice into your daily life. Why are you at my table? So I think that that's a really great place to do some exploratory like journaling, maybe. Journaling, we know how much I love pen and paper journaling. It's in the toolbox, my video. My love affair with pen and paper journal. Couldn't recommend it higher. And so that was the past. Now we're looking at our present and our future. Mars going into the sign of cancer. This is mother. This is mother. Mars is activating mother and Capricorn Pluto is being activated. Pluto is activating father. You will see mother and father tendencies coming out you will see mother and father issues coming out (sighs) my guides are showing me the video that i did it was the second full moon in capricorn was that at 29 degrees i think it was i'll put the link below it was titled but i'm daddy's favorite and you'll see that you're going to see that playing out in the world it's (sighs) Okay, there's so many different things going on. I'm just going to channel it because a few different things came through. Like, power meets softness. I don't want to fight anymore. Groundhog Day. For my... My God, you're like, Sarah, you just said you were going to channel. The Groundhog Day component... They're showing me this Ferris wheel. They're showing me this merry-go-round. They're showing me this, like, circus, this clown world. And it's fear and there's negativity. Okay, they're bringing me back to the parable of people fighting on opposite sides of the red line. We've been talking about that a bit. The last time I referenced that was in the new moon in Virgo introductory video, All Systems Go. So I won't repeat myself, but they're basically showing that on opposite sides of the red line, there's like this circus that's been put on like a circus going on that side and that everybody that's over like having those picnics and creating their new world with their thoughts words actions and intentions is kind of like looking over and they're like it's the FOMO like 
But I want to play in the merry-go-round. I like merry-go-rounds. I like Ferris wheels. Why can't I play in those? And then, like, like the second you walk over, it's like you try to touch it and you see that it's not real, that it's like this hologram. It's really dark what they're showing me. And so it's like you see like the negative, you see the masks of the people that are running this hologram and you see the, the you know, fire and the destruction and all of the things. It's like this mirage that when you try to walk towards it, you're like, it's not real. It's not fun. I don't want to be on a merry-go-round. There, it's like the, um, oh gosh, it's like the hocus pocus, dance, dance, dance until you die. It's like everyone that's dancing and having fun, but they're like, ah, I want to stop dancing. I want to get off the merry-go-round. And so don't let FOMO or don't let any perceived fun, um, they're showing me addictive tendencies, all these different things, FOMO of whatever you're working through right now and they're speaking directly to you, don't be distracted. Like listen to the channeled message, the, you know, get distraction, get distracted with your own distractions and not the distractions of the outside world. Now they're showing me like, so a bunch of people that were on both sides of the, or opposite sides of the red line were on the merry-go-round. And then all of a sudden, like a switch gets flipped and they realize they're sitting next to someone that's on the other side of the red line. The switch was like sleeper cells. And they're like, I can't believe I'm next to you. I can't believe. And they just start fighting again. It's like, it's such a razor's edge what is being experienced right now in that, in that world. And they want us to be aware of that. They want us to know that that's what's happening so that you don't go looking for validation, egoic validation. Just stay within your realm and your softness. Like what are the positive sides of home, my pocket of the world, safety is key. They're showing me a little bit of like you sitting at a therapy table or sitting on like a couch talking to someone, it could be a healer, it could be a therapist, it could be a shaman, it could be a spiritual coach, a leadership coach, whoever it is. And you, you know, have gone to the root of your mother and father issues. Now they want you to ask yourself, like, what are the good parts of your mother and father or capital M, capital F? What are the positive parts of cancer and Capricorn? What are the beautiful aspects of adulthood what are the beautiful aspects of taking care of yourself this is the roots of the tree of your life cultural family roots so what what tools can you integrate that your parents had that maybe you resented because what we have to know about I'm asking my guides if this is okay to share. So yes, they want us to transmute something. A lot of what the, we can, a lot of people when they wake up, they recognize that there's a lot of anger and frustration over, I was told once you get married, once you got the job, once you get this, once you get that, once you get this, I'd be happy but I'm not happy. And I also want to time out and highlight that during this time period, you're going to notice just by the Aries and the Libra axis alone, just by this and that, you're going to see a lot of um, relationships that have been together for a very long time, separating amicably, beautifully with love and reverence, but people have been together for you know 10 plus years are going to be separating. That's just what we're going to see. So be supportive of that and be inspired by that. And if that is something that I'm giving you permission, whomever needs to hear that across time and space, that you're very much not alone in that. Uh, the relationships are drastically changing video. That is in the toolbox. That is for you. I want to go back to what I was talking about before. So we must forgive the people that sold us that lie 
they were completely unconscious as well or within that realm and they were sold that lie as well. So it wasn't a lie because that was their truth. So when you wake up or when you become sovereign, when you step into your authenticity and you you know blend your power with your softness, you forgive and you say thank you. Thank you for doing the best that you could with the tools that you had. Thank you mom and dad for doing the best you could with the tools you had. Thank you to my former bosses, my former leaders, the people that I had maybe said, you were so bad. You didn't hire me. You didn't do this. You didn't do this. You didn't see my worth, blah, 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 blah. When you start to see the worth in yourself, you must thank them. Be like, oh my God, if you had hired me, I would have been stuck in that company. Yeah, you did the best thing for me. You showed me how strong I am. You showed me how soft I can be. And you showed me how free I can be and how incredible that is. So we must... This is, t this is not easy. So I'm just, uh, what I'm offering to you today is just my guides want to highlight that like this is, this is self mastery. Like my self mastery program, this is self mastery. If you need like a very in depth six chapter program to guide you through your awakening and make it as efficient as possible, that program is for you. I think it's mastery444 is the code to make it $444 right now it's an $800 program it's like literally hours and spider webs of videos and just so much but the link for that is below so definitely go check that out if you're interested and for anyone who's ever interested please reach out we can book a 15 minute free consultation to talk about any of my programs my self mastery pro any of the things if you need a little bit more information just please reach out and i'm happy to talk to you for free and just decide if i'm the person for you so they're saying coming back to they're highlighting the stages of grief whatever cycle that you have labeled getting to acceptance that says, wow, the people that taught me, the institutions, the parents, whomever is like, this is legacy public life career, this is home my pocket of the world safety, this is relationships, and this is me. So North Node is going into me and Chiron is retrograde. So like, it is not easy to stand in our authenticity, to stand in our power and to stay soft. Like my guy, like you were right. Like there were some serious traumas, big T, little T traumas. Like there was a lot that happened to you. But part of self-mastery is recognizing that we contracted all this. And it was our decision whether you use the lens of astrology and you look over your birth chart and you're like, oh yeah, it's, it's in there. I decided the second I was born for this to happen to me. It doesn't discredit how discomforting and how painful it is for the human, so give yourself time, but recognize that like, we decided for this to happen. We came to this planet to be here during this time period right now. We contracted that. It's a big deal to be human right now. So getting to forgiveness and surrender and authenticity and acceptance is a big deal. So give yourself as much time as you need, but recognizing that you can't go to the FOMO, you can't go back into the polarizing world, you can't also point fingers and be like, this is your fault. There's a lot of cognitive dissonance that's going on right now. So just stay the course and just stay in your softness. Okay, so I wanna talk about Mars because this like, We've talked about Pluto in Aquarius. We've talked about Pluto in Capricorn. I have a whole video on the North Node over here in Aries and the South Node over here in Libra. That's in the longer range transit playlist. I wrote a whole article about the South Node, Lilith, and Venus on my Substack in Libra. That's intense. The moon in this moment as I'm recording this is at eight degrees of Libra. So that's why I have all of these together over here in the house of relationships, the important people in my life. That's why you see people separating. That's why you see people stepping into their authenticity saying, I have evolved. I have changed. I love you. We're not matching right now. What can, like, how do I say in relationships, what you're seeing right now is that when you invoke your Lilith, when you step into your Venus, when you master your South Node, when you, you know, I'll just talk about it today because I'm hopefully going to post this today. When you really listen to your intuition, your moon sign, all in the house of relationships, like the people that are meant for you, 
it really doesn't matter how much you evolve. It really doesn't matter how much you change. They're like, oh my God, I changed too. We really still match. We really still match. We really still match. We still speak from I statement. We, show, we still share similar values. It's belief systems can change and ebb and flow and that's amazing, that's amazing. But the people that are really meant for you, they respect you, they respect what it is that you want and what you're doing, that's amazing. What you're going to find right now is that what what's being said right now in my brain, I'm just saying like, I don't want to be in a judgmental space. And my guides are actually saying like sometimes it's not judgment, it's like qualifying and quantifying what you're allowing into your vibration. They're showing me, Sarah, like you choose to eat organic, you choose to do all these specific things, you drive for water, you don't drink tap water. These are your values and your standards. So you actually do have to keep and hold those standards when it comes to the people that you allow in your life and your inner circle. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't like a judgment, be like, you're this, because I never want to speak from that, but saying, these are my new values. These are my evolved, authentic values. This is what I believe to be true. I don't want to change you, but for us to stay in each other's lives, we have to find a common ground. We have to find a common ground. And it's so okay to, like I have people in my life that we have very different belief systems and we honor each other. And we're like, okay, that's your belief system. This is my belief system. Sometimes we choose not to talk about them. Sometimes we do choose to talk about them. So, but it's a beautiful thing because I get to learn a different belief system and they get to learn a different belief system. And we just never try to change each other. We're just like, this is what I think. This is what you think. So that's amazing. But if you ever see someone being so mastering your mother and father is it, what they're showing me is that there's a lot of inner teenager stuff coming out a lot of inner adolescent you know this is the infant baby ram this is the little kiddo the gemini is like the kid that's like i just stuck my finger in the socket this is what it's going to feel like maybe don't do that and then cancer is a little bit i find like the cancer and the leo energy to be like the stand by me kids where it's like this is your people, this is your group, they're, they're growing up a little bit. And the Libra, this is the balanced scales, the relationships. They're like, oh my God. They're showing me you taking like a snow globe or one of your favorite childhood toys, maybe something it's like that you had sealed up. It's like a flip book, so I'm, it's like they're showing me like the the seal like the beanie baby with the tab still tag still on it or the you know like power ranger that you never opened like it's it's like a collectible like a collectible teenage toy and they're showing whatever it is snow like whatever it is for you and it's like you having it like like in the living room okay perfect this is they, they got rid of that image and now they're showing me like you know in um I didn't go to university, but I would, you know, sometimes go to parties in my drinking days and on those like houses, they would have like liquor bottles all in the kitchen and like all like lining the, the kitchen. Like there'd just be empty liquor bottles everywhere, pretty liquor, bottles, all the liquor bottles. And they're basically showing me you one day, like <sighs> recycling those. Be like, I really don't want to like put up on a pedestal all of the times I was buckled and did things that I'm really not proud of and or whatever that represents for you. A lot of people are looking at their addictive tendencies. Right now I have, on the All Signs readings, I've had Aquarius, I've had Sag, and I've had Virgo really going through a lot of addictive tendencies and really releasing a lot of addictive tendencies. Um, Pisces is like, they're doing great. I have to say, I have to say a lot of Pisces placements that have been commenting on my videos, they've been doing a really wonderful job mastering their emotions. And uh, you know, I have a subscriber that's you know, doing intermittent fasting, water fasting, understanding that like Saturn wants to be your friend. Great stuff. Neptune wants to be your friend. Great stuff. So I'm really proud of all of y'all. So if you need some assistance right now, people go talk to a Pisces because like whether or not they a lot of people, even as I'm saying this, you're recognizing that you do have a Pisces in your life that you're like, I used to think that they were just so emotional, do, 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 do. And now you're like, yeah, I kind of, 
They are really smashing it. They are really smashing it. All right, my guys are saying like kind of bring it all together. So lean on your Aries right now. Where is Aries falling in your chart? Really look to where the North Node is placed or where the first Dakin of Aries from zero degrees of Aries to 10 degrees of Aries falls in your chart. What planets do you have there? What is happening in that area of your life? I want you to literally lean on that. That's where the North Node is in a way that might seem irrational. And I want you to lean into it. They're showing me like the, a little black kitten with like a massive like Doberman or, you know, Roddy that's standing next to it and be like, be your black cat, be your dark dog, like be that energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find out where this is happening in your chart and try your very best to, instead of sinking into like, that hurt or I'm losing friends or I don't really like it. I don't like this feeling. Just say thank you. Just say thank you for, oh my God, we're not a vibrational match anymore. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for this experience. Thank you so much for showing me how strong I am. Thank you so much for showing me. Wherever the pain is, there's probably gold underneath it. If there's like a relationship that's really discomforting or, you know, very frustrating, the next relationship that comes in is like a big deal. If there's something professional that's you're experiencing or within community that's uncomfortable, there's there's success underneath. I'm having full body reactions as I say a lot of these things. Wherever Capricorn is falling in your chart, wherever the last taken of Capricorn, actually just Capricorn completely, this might feel a little bit like you're on a battlefield and you see the finish line, you see it ending, and you're almost done with it. I don't want you to judge yourself with what's happening in that area of your life in any capacity. Just get through what you're getting through and give yourself a larger debrief from you know the 19th, 20th of November back to 2008. You know what I mean? It's the 5th of September as I record this, I literally need you to get to the 19th, 20th of November. That's it. This is a transit that's been going on since 2008. Does that make sense? Like you're at the very end. Don't get mad at yourself. It's like you're running an ultra marathon and you're hallucinating and you just pooped your pants and you're, and pardon me for being crass. You're not going to get mad at yourself. Just get to the finish line. However you need to do it, just get to the finish line. Sarah, you told me this was going to be about Mars. We're getting there. We're almost there. So we talked about Libra. We talked about Cancer or Capricorn. We talked about Aries. Now Mars activating the mother of the house, your cultural family roots, the safety area of your life. My guides are like showing me you're going to. I want you to go watch the can't have a told you so dance because this is a balancing act. What you're going to see or have the tendency to want to effortlessly do is walk down the street and be like, you're in your teenager. You're on the other side of the line. You're over here. I can't talk to you. Da, 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 da. They want you to say thank you. Say, thank you. We're not a vibrational match. Thank you for showing me my intuition. My ear is ringing. I now know that my guides are telling me that I can't talk to you. And that's okie dokie. You can talk to other people. And I want you to talk to that other person. Thank you for showing me how strong I am. Thank you for showing me this. You're walking on cold and you're doing a beautiful job doing it. But do you see how it's that, you know, razor's edge where it can, I don't want you to do this. I want you to look back at yourself. Because every time you are viewing someone, this is perfect. This is the perfect analogy. So remember when Cat Williams was like, being interviewed all over the place and he was talking about it is at the beginning of 2024 where he's like 2024 everything's coming to light and everything's coming to light and everything's coming to light he said something in one of the interviews where he's like i don't even look at somebody or some i don't look at someone else's wife i don't look at something i don't want because i'm so powerful my power of my thoughts words action and intentions if i look at it it's mine it's mine and so a very long time ago 
not a very long time ago, but it seems that way because I just, in a different version of Sarah, I would have, you know, walked down the street and been like, no, you're not him. You're not him. No, it's not a, this isn't a vibrational match. And my brain would just start to list the whys. You're, why you're not a person for me. Why you're not a person for me. Why I, you know, I'm a divine feminine waiting for my divine masculine, my soul mate, soul match, I'd rather say, and not soul mate. I find that can be a very like triggering term. We all have infinite soul mates, people that we come into this planet to experience with. But my soul match, I have not met him yet as I'm recording this. So I used to do that. And I'd be like, it's not you, 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 not you, not you. That's a waste of my energy. And that's a judgment. And that's, I'm giving that person energy every single time I connect to them. So now, black cat kitten, Doberman, Rottweiler. I just walk down the street. I stay in my bubble. I think positive thoughts. I talk to God. I talk to spirit, my spirit team. And I think about the things that I want to think about. And I think about creation. And I think about my mission. And I think about how I can be most authentic of service not best or do more but how i can reach more people doing what i'm doing now how can i best serve you how can i best offer information to you yeah there's so many things that i've shifted and changed within my business in the past week and I'm still in a space of celebrating. I'm really proud of what I've accomplished. I'm proud, I spent an entire month creating a self-mastery program for you. My entire life, basically, but also a month putting it together. And I'm really proud of it. You know, I Goldilocks my rates and found a space that I'm really, like, happy with. Dude, my private sessions go for a few hours. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm honoring my, the work that I do every second of every day. Yeah, but I'm since like four o'clock, studying the planets and the cards and doing what I can for you. And it's a privilege, it's a pleasure. It really is. I'm loving the lemon right now. Loving the lemon. Every once in a while you need a little bit of bitterness. So wrapping this all up, because we're gonna have Let's just view this visually. Mars is going to scoot to the 3rd of November. And then she's going to go into Leo. See how it's like quick. So this is the 4th of September. And this is the 3rd of November. And then the 6th of December, he's only gone to 6 degrees. So this is like one month and then one month. So turn back around. Come back here. Go to 17 degrees by the 23rd of February, 2025, and then go fully into Leo the 18th of April. I wanna leave this here, I don't wanna put that there, I don't wanna give you the wrong visual. So right now, I go back to the, if you have nothing nice to say, don't even, don't engage, don't engage. I don't usually engage with rude comments, you know, disrespectful people. I really choose not to. It's not of my vibration. This is my space. You can leave at any time, you know? Like, I'm not forcing you to be here. I'm not forcing anyone to be here. This is really just, like, me in my living room offering you what I can. So if people have judgments or frustrations over the way that I run my business, you literally can just leave. It's okay. I'm not forcing you to be here. You know, when it comes to... The algorithms and it's like positive or negative comments I don't think YouTube knows the difference it's just you're you're helping to get my message out there so I can go to gratitude and acceptance and recognize that I'm a public person I can't control the way that the public acts it doesn't feel good but I'm getting used to it it's reminding me to stay in my softness and that if I'm receiving big, my brain is going to try to label it as negative, but if I'm receiving big attention somewhere, there's gold tucked in. There's gold tucked in. 
So I'm very grateful for that trigger instead of an older version of me would have been like, I'm sorry, which way do you want me to be? Which way do you want me to be? And now I'm like, you can, you can go. There's, you know, that gives another person space at the table, a healthier person that, you know, is maybe more of a vibrational match. What my guides are saying by standing in your authenticity and standing in your power and blending your power with your softness, being in your divine feminine and being in your divine masculine, I'm going to put the divine feminine video below as well and in the toolbox there's Papa can you hear me and then there was mother if you need more information there you are going to represent unconsciously and subconsciously to someone that maybe is not doing their inner work their own mother and their own father I want to tell a story and then I'm going to leave you so I had a table the other day at the restaurant it was a busy Saturday night and it was a six top I want to say and two people ordered different drinks that were both served in champagne glasses and so one of them was like um, had like a few different things in it and a lemon twist and the one of them was just a glass of Prosecco and so I dropped them down put the order in went about my life you know I have hundreds of other things to do I'm 10 steps ahead and this woman flagged me over and she goes, the drink was probably like a third of the way drunk, almost halfway gone. She goes, not with the glasses, but she was like, I was served the wrong drink. And I look at the glass, I go, okay. She goes, yeah, I was given hers and she was given mine. I was like, oh my goodness, can I get you another one? I'm so sorry, I wish you had told me before, the second you take a sip or a bite of something that's not for you, just let me know, no one's forcing you to ingest something that you don't want, ever, ever. Like, I'm not here, to, like, I'm not trying to, literally, literally, I was like, my goodness, tell me, anytime you take a bite of something that's not for you, just let me know right away. I am happy to be of service, what can I do? She says, no, I'm going to drink it. And eventually I would like a glass of what I did order with a twist of lemon. So my brain was like, she likes it she's happy with what she's drinking but it felt like she was trying to cut into my soul and I just literally was like so there's nothing wrong right now and she, like this no nothing is wrong right now I was like and you don't need anything right now no I don't need anything right now I was like okay cool I'm just gonna I'm gonna go let me know if you need anything and so what and I just literally walked away and recognized in that moment that you know it happens in service you're when someone is providing food or beverage for you it goes to a psychological space of your id comes out these are your basic needs that need to be met if you ever had a table or have you ever been hangry before have you heard of that term hangry and then as soon as you eat you're like I'm fine again it's because there's a version inside of yourself that is saying I am not safe because I need sustenance to survive. Your survival mechanisms are coming out. Um, that's why, you know, the more you fast, the closer to God you get because it's a self-mastery of that. And um, so basically I walked away and she, like anytime I looked over, I was like, ma'am, I'm not your mother. I'm not your mother. I'm not forcing you to sit at a table and eat something that you do not want to eat. We've talked about this before with like the people that don't eat their vegetables, where it's like, my mother made me sit at the table and eat my vegetables and blah, 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 blah. It's like, you're in your 50s. You could have just ordered double potatoes or french fries. You could have done whatever you wanted. You're, you're allowed to have that experience. And so what you could possibly see with this energy and with the understanding of how difficult it is to look at your own stuff and to look in the mirror and to speak from I statements and the more you find power in softness in your divine masculine in your divine feminine you will experience triggering experience you will experience either triggering someone or they will trigger you you'll both get triggered it's going to be an activation 
And so being aware of that going into this energy, it's gonna be helpful, it's gonna be helpful. It's also a nice gift. I'm going to leave you with this to give that person to be like, wow, we are a vibrational match for each other. You activated me. I activated you. Maybe what my ego is telling me is that you are unconscious, but you invited me to activate something within your life. And now you can go maybe unlock that seed inside of yourself. Yeah, this is deep stuff. This is deep, deep, deep stuff. So try to find gratitude and reverence for the trigger, for the, it's not even the villain, it's just kind of like the activation, your rebrand trigger. Oh my God, I'm so triggered by you to be like, wow, there's power in there. Rebranding power. What does power mean to you? That's something that I referenced in my Substack article where it's like, when you ask yourself, like, what does power mean? I have a picture, like a classic picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger in there because that's like forte. But think of a mother that, you know, I've never seen the movie, but like in, was it where? Give me my daughter's pills, give me my daughter's pills. Or the mom that like lifts the car up over her child or literally gives birth. That's incredible power. That's incredible, incredible power. We also must recognize that when it comes to divine masculine, some of the strongest divine masculine men I know are the most gentle and kindest. It's that phrase, like, you have no idea how much violence, yeah, you have no idea how much violence it took to become this gentle. So letting people be in their adolescence that's a component to themselves. It's never gonna go away. So try to find kindness. Kindness for yourself and kindness for others. Your brain is gonna brain. Your brain might judge. But you know, when it came to, I heard this phrase a long time ago when I was really learning how to understand my anxiety was, we are not our first thought. We are our second thought and first action. So somebody, you know, cuts you off in traffic. That son of a, I live in Boston area, so it's like, meh, 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 meh. like, okay, that person obviously is in a rush to go somewhere. Maybe their wife is in the hospital having a baby. Maybe they're late for work. Maybe something's going on. Maybe they're just really frustrated. Like I was driving slowly to the grocery store the other day and someone was like whizzing behind me. I was like, wow, I'm so blessed that I have time freedom and they might be just like late for a job that they really don't like. So just God bless that person. Because I can't, because my brain is braining. So just like God take over. I don't even know what I'm gonna title this because it's, it's more to do with like, yeah. Might be just like an energy update, I have no idea. But I'm gonna try to find my best way to title this. Power meets softness, could be it, but please, Thank you so much for being here. Please like this video if you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you're keen for more, you know, blending of leadership, personal growth and development and astrological understandings and validations for those things. Uh, we definitely, you know, express ourselves creatively around here. So finding ways to do that. Please share this video with someone that you might think could benefit from it. Um, please head over to my Substack. I am, you know, it's very, very interesting. Right now on YouTube, I have the capacity. I'm at like the first tier of, you know, monetizing in the YouTube partner program. I don't want to create a private subscription-based YouTube. I'm That doesn't resonate with me. I want to give as much as I can. It just feels better to offer everything for free for you. But Substack, I tried to create a $4.40 subscription, but the minimum is $5 dollars over there so if you'd like to support i'm also closing my donation based patreon all of the patreon over there if you know you know patreon's going through it right now and so i appreciated that but i'd rather give you more teachings and have you have something taken away and as always i'm just so grateful for the people that have donated and for the people that have given back or for the clients and the um, customers that i've gotten through youtube i'm very very grateful so my videos pretty much always are gonna be free, available. 
but the Substack, I'm going to give Monday. Monday articles are going to be free, and then I'll do one or two articles a week that are going to be paid. If you're keen to give back, if not, call me if you need anything. And as always, and I've said this numerous times before, if there is anything ever that you're interested in that is not within your current reality financially, please reach out and tell me, and we'll find a place to meet in the middle. I do donation-based readings, donation-based clients every single month. And so I'm happy to be of service for you in ways that make sense to both of us. Let me know how I can best support. You're never alone in this. Love you. Ciao.